Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I want to teach you three tricks you must know to improve your workflow. If you don't know these tricks, these will help you tremendously. But if you do, then I don't know why you're watching tutorials. You probably know everything already. So the first trick I want to teach you is how to resize frames. So you might have seen this before where you're trying to resize a frame and there's elements in your frame that are moving around, which is super annoying. And you know the reason why, it's because the constraints are incorrect. So let me just pick something. For example, this one's on scale, scale. This one is left bottom. You essentially want most things to be left top or left right top. But instead of going through all your components and changing them to be the correct thing, a hack is to just hold the command key. So if I'm moving it around and I press the command key and hold it down, what it's doing is actually ignoring the constraints, which is super handy if you want to change your frame size really quickly. The second trick I want to show you is using the space bar and it has some neat tricks that enable you to move objects. So the first one I want to show you is when you're drawing, you can actually move the starting point by pressing space, which is super handy. I'm holding down space actually, and I can let go and it just stops. The downfall is the guides only work with your second point. So you can see the guides are indicated where my cursor is. But if I was to move my first point, I can no longer pick a guide or see any guides, which is kind of useless. Other scenarios where the spacebar comes in handy is when you're trying to move a component and you don't want it to move in the layers panel. So what do I mean by this is, let's say I have this card and I want to move it to this edge of this frame. I can carefully select the edge to move it to the edge like this. And that works because my cursor is still within the frame. However, if you're working really fast, sometimes you just want to select the middle. And because my cursor is now out of the frame, the component comes out with it. And you can see in the layers panel, it sort of jumped position. So what you want to do is actually by keeping it in the frame, if you don't want this layer to move, you can just click. You want to always click first, then hold space. And now Figma will know not to move that layer. So I can move it off the frame as well, but it will enable me to move it to the edge quite easily. So another example where this might be handy is when you're trying to put something on top of an order layer. So I have this notification bubble here, which is just a five, and I want to move it on top of the bell. So just to explain, this is an order layout of icons. However, when I try to put it on top of the bell, Figma is trying to put it into this order layout, which is not exactly what I want. So you can see it's trying to fit it in the order layout. So what I can do is I have my order layout here and it's above my order layout in the layers panel. So because I don't want it to move, I can select on my notification bubble. So click, then hold space. And now Figma will sort of not move it in the layers panel, which will enable me to put it on top of the order layout rather than inside which is super handy too. The final trick is knowing how to copy styles. So as an example, I have these three shapes. I have a square, a circle, and an arrow. And I have this square that is styled differently. It has the yellow fill and a purple stroke, and the stroke is a 10. So I can actually copy these properties by holding down Option Command C, and then to paste the properties is Option Command V. And as you can see, the fill, the stroke, and the thickness, everything has copied across. So I can do that with a circle and also with this arrow. So even with this arrow, it can have a fill, but essentially it does nothing because arrows is essentially just one line. And you can do it for anything. So for example, if it has a shadow effect, let's make it a bit bigger so you can see it. Let's go 10 and 10. So I just tabbed to jump to the next field. I can do that again. So option command C to copy your property and paste like that. There we have it. Um, if I have another shape like this, let me just go ahead and delete these. If I have another one, so let me just copy and paste this. I'm just holding down the option key, click dragging. Let's say this stroke is red and it's 10. And I want to copy only the stroke. Let's say the fill was this yellow color, but I didn't want the fill to be yellow. I just wanted to copy the stroke. 
you can actually select the edge of the stroke and just do a regular copy. So just Command C and then paste. So all this does is it copies the color, but it doesn't copy the thickness. And the things you can copy are the effect. So for example, I can click on the effect or the stroke. So just the edge of it or the fill, which can be handy. I don't know any scenarios where you'd necessarily want to do that. It's quite easy to copy in other ways. Um, but if you do, you can do that. So for example, I want to copy the fill now. I can just select the fill. Command C and then Command V. So yet again, you can see that even though I've copied the stroke, the stroke is by default one. So it doesn't know how to copy the 10 thickness for some reason. So I can't, I can't click there, nothing happens. The copy properties feature is also handy for copying images into components. As an example, if I was to just do regular copy and paste, I copy this image, click on this rectangle, Command V, it doesn't do anything. It just copies the image. However, if you do Option Command C, click on the rectangle, Option Command V, you can copy that image into a component. So that's really handy too. Hopefully you've learned something today. If not, I'm so sorry. You're probably more advanced than me, but that's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.